If you're wondering which video editing mice are worth your money, stick around. After we run through each product, I'll give you my personal take. Would I buy it or would I skip it? No fluff, just my honest opinion. Let's get into it. Logitech M720 Triathlon. This budget beast at $40 is like the Swiss Army knife of mice. It connects to three devices simultaneously and has more customizable buttons than a NASA control panel, making timeline scrubbing and Final Cut Pro smoother than my pickup lines. The downside is it's only available in black, so if you're rocking that white aesthetic setup, you're screwed. Plus, the low DPI means it's about as gaming ready as a potato. Would I buy it? Yes, it's basically a budget MX Master that won't break your bank account and actually works great for video editing workflows. Razer Pro Click and 2. This productivity powerhouse packs a ridiculous 30,000 DPI sensor that's so precise it can probably detect your existential crisis while you're editing at 3 a.m. The catch is you have to manually switch between tactile and free spin scroll modes like some kind of caveman because Razer decided to skip the smart reel feature that would make timeline navigation actually enjoyable. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's got the performance chops for pixel-perfect editing work, but the lack of automatic scroll switching is more annoying than ads on YouTube. Logitech Lift. This vertical mouse will save your wrist from turning into a pretzel during those marathon editing sessions, and the customizable buttons can be mapped to different apps, so your Premiere Pro shortcuts don't mess with your web browsing. The bad news is it scrolls like it's stuck in molasses on Mac. No smooth inertia scrolling means your timeline navigation feels choppier than a bad action movie. Would I buy it? Yes. Your future self will thank you when you're not popping ibuprofen like candy after 12-hour editing binges. Glorious Model O2 Pro. This lightweight speed demon at 59 grams can hit up to 8,000 hertz polling rate, making it smoother than butter on hot toast for precise timeline work. The problem is the software is buggier than a beta release. Liftoff detection randomly resets, and polling rates below 1,000 hertz are about as stable as my mental health during crunch time. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's fast as hell for editing, but dealing with the software issues is like playing Russian roulette with your workflow. Razer Death Adder 5.3 Pro. This ergonomic champion weighs only 59 grams and delivers buttery smooth tracking that makes scrubbing through 4K footage feel like gliding through clouds. The downside is, Razer's software is notorious for being more unstable than a house of cards, though you can save settings to the mouse and pretend the app doesn't exist. Would I buy it? Yes, it's the perfect balance of lightweight comfort and precision that won't make your hand feel like it's been through a blender after editing all day. Logitech G305 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse this little budget beast packs a 12,000 dots per inch hero sensor that tracks like a bloodhound on Red Bull, making it surprisingly decent for scrubbing through timelines even though it's designed for fragging noobs. The catch is, you'll be feeding it AA batteries like a hungry Tamagotchi because there's no built-in rechargeable option, and that AA battery makes it feel like you're dragging around a brick compared to modern mice. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's cheap as chips and performs way better than it has any right to, but that battery situation is more annoying than a YouTube ad you can't skip. Kensington Pro Fit Ergo Vertical Wireless Trackball K 75,326 WW This ergonomic monstrosity looks like someone took a regular mouse and put it through a blender with a bowling ball, but that 60-degree tilt actually saves your wrist from turning into a pretzel during those marathon editing sessions. The thumb-controlled trackball means you're basically playing arcade games from the 80s while trying to make precise cuts, and good luck explaining to clients why you're fondling a ball all day. Would I buy it? No. Unless you enjoy the challenge of relearning how to use a mouse like you're five years old again, this trackball life isn't for most video editors. Razer Basilisk 5.3 Pro This wireless editing powerhouse comes with a ridiculous 30,000 dots per inch sensor that's more precise than a Swiss watchmaker on Adderall. Plus, those optical switches give you 0.2 millisecond response times that make timeline scrubbing feel buttery smooth. At 112 grams, it's heavier than my motivation on Monday mornings, and you'll pay premium prices for all that RGB bling that serves zero purpose in your dark editing cave. Would I buy it? Yes. If you can stomach the price tag, this thing is basically the Ferrari of editing mice with performance that actually justifies the cost. Logitech MX Anywhere 3S. This compact editing companion tracks on literally any surface, including glass, with its 8,000 dots per inch sensor, making it perfect for those coffee shop editing sessions where you're pretending to be productive. The quiet clicks are supposedly 90% less noisy than regular mice which is great until you realize you miss that satisfying click feedback 
and start questioning if you're actually pressing buttons. Would I buy it? Yes. It's like the Swiss army knife of mice. Small enough to travel, but powerful enough to handle serious editing work without making you look like a gaming nerd. Logitech MX Vertical. This ergonomic tower of confusion stands at a 57 degree angle, like the leaning tower of Pisa had a baby with a computer mouse. And while it does reduce wrist strain, good luck trying to do precision work when your thumb has to fight gravity. The 4,000 dots per inch sensor is decent enough for basic editing tasks, but you'll spend more time adjusting to this weird grip than actually editing your masterpiece. Would I buy it? Maybe, if your wrist is already screaming for mercy and you don't mind looking like you're shaking hands with your computer computer all day, but most editors will find this more frustrating than helpful. Kensington Pro Fit Ergo TB 550 wireless trackball mouse. This thing looks like someone took a regular mouse and gave it a tumor on the side, but damn if that trackball doesn't make scrubbing through footage smoother than my pickup lines. The 45 degree tilt makes it feel like you're holding a joystick while editing, which is either genius or completely ridiculous, depending on how much coffee you've had. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's got that four month battery life and the learning curve might be worth it if you're tired of your wrist feeling like it went 10 rounds with a heavyweight boxer. Logitech G502X Plus Lightspeed. This gaming mouse moonlights as a video editor's dream with its programmable buttons that you can set up for all your editing shortcuts, making it faster than your ex leaving when the check arrives. The thing is heavier than most gaming mice, which actually helps with precision when you're trying to nail that perfect cut, but it might feel like you're dragging a brick around if you're used to ultralight mice. Would I buy it? Yes. The macro programming through G-Hub makes it a productivity beast for video editing, even if it wasn't specifically designed for it. Glorious Model D2 Pro. This ergonomic beast weighs only 60 grams and has optical switches rated for 100 million clicks, so it'll outlast your current relationship and probably the next three. The 8000 Hz polling rate when wired sounds impressive until you realize most video editing software won't even notice the difference, making it like buying a Ferrari to drive in a school zone. Would I buy it? Maybe the ergonomic design is comfortable for long editing sessions, but the high polling rate features are overkill for video editing unless you're also planning to dominate some first-person shooters. Asus ROG Keras the second Ace. This lightweight gaming mouse packs a 42,000 dots per inch sensor and 4,000 hertz polling rate, which is like having a Formula One engine in your grocery cart for video editing. The ROG 100 million optical micro switches give you tactile clicks that feel satisfying, but the lack of dedicated video editing features means you're paying for gaming specs you probably won't use. Would I buy it? No. It's a solid gaming mouse trying to be a video editing tool, but there are better options designed specifically for creative work. Logitech MX Master 3S. This is the undisputed king of video editing mice with its mag speed scrolling that lets you fly through timelines faster than gossip spreads in a small town. Plus, that side scroll wheel is perfect for horizontal timeline navigation. The 8,000 dots per inch dark field sensor tracks on any surface, including glass, and the customizable buttons can be programmed for all your editing shortcuts, making it more versatile than a Swiss army knife. Would I buy it? Yes. It's specifically designed for creative professionals, has up to 70 days of battery life, and the ergonomic design means your hand won't hate you after a 12-hour editing marathon. Razer Cobra Pro. This thing packs a ridiculous 30,000 dots per inch sensor that'll track your cursor movements like a stalker ex-girlfriend, but at 77 grams, it's heavier than my expectations for a mini mouse. The scroll wheel feels like you're driving on a gravel road, which is perfect for scrubbing through timelines, except when you accidentally scroll while trying to hit those side buttons because apparently Razer thinks we all have surgeon fingers. Would I buy it? Yes. Despite feeling like a brick compared to other small mice, this bad boy delivers buttery smooth performance that'll make your video edits flow like a TikTok dance trend. SteelSeries Aerox 9 Wireless. This beast comes loaded with more side buttons than a TV remote from the 90s, making it perfect for assigning all your video editing shortcuts. But the scroll wheel is buried deeper than my will to live after a 12-hour editing session. The 18,000 dots per inch True Move air sensor tracks like a bloodhound, though you might develop carpal tunnel trying to reach that damn scroll wheel for timeline scrubbing. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's got more buttons than I know what to do with and performs like a dream, but if you're constantly using scroll wheel functions for video editing, you'll be more frustrated than a YouTuber trying to get monetized. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you pick the video editing mice for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. 
Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description.